all right so welcome to arise online classes so in this particular lecture we will be discussing about the chapter complex numbers so welcome to your first lecture on the topic complex numbers welcome to your first lecture on the topic complex numbers all right fine so now let us actually see what complex numbers is all about and try to understand what is the purpose of this number called as complex numbers complex numbers are generally actually called as or written in the standard form a plus ib it is written in the standard form a plus ib in which a is called as in which a is called as the real part a is called as the real part and what is b and b is called as the imaginary part and b is called as the imaginary part so what do you mean by this uh, real part and imaginary part okay so first in order to understand this one you need to think about a logic where uh, uh, there was a question to uh, the, i'll just give you some uh, uh, ideas about what is complex numbers or how the number system actually got evolved by itself so you all know that zero was a invention of some point of time like we had some positive numbers of course but zero was invented after some time of uh, some point of time so before zero was invented it was said that 4 minus 4 had no solution 4 minus 4 had no solution that was the concept before zero was invented once zero was invented this got wrong and we said that the answer is equal to zero till negative numbers was not invented we said that 4 minus 5 had no solution and when negative numbers was introduced we said that the value is equal to minus 1 so exactly like that everything was going on like that like a new number system actually will be introduced when this particular solution we will like we be looking into something called as which has no solution and when i say that an answer a scenario has a scenario a question has a scenario which says that it has no solution what we generally do is that we try to solve that scenario by using some form of techniques right so in this case we have something called as 4 minus 5 when i say that it has no solution solution they introduced a concept called as negative numbers and we said that minus 1 is the answer to that particular solution now similarly square root of 4 has plus or minus 2 has its answer but when we said that square root of minus 4 had no solution for a long period of time because the reason for that is that we cannot find a number which actually when i multiply two times when i multiply by itself it should yield a negative number that was not a possible scenario why because a positive number into a positive number is positive and a negative number into a negative number is also positive so whether my solution cannot be positive and it cannot be negative that was the scenario the only number that is not positive and negative is zero and that was the scenario and we said that it is not possible to have a solution and this was actually solved by introducing a new number which is called as imaginary number all right this was actually solved by introducing a new number that is called as real or imaginary number which is actually different from the concept of real numbers which is completely different from the concept of real numbers now real numbers are numbers that we can actually see for ourselves we can experience for ourselves but imaginary numbers are not like that imaginary numbers cannot be seen or experienced all right now let us actually see how this particular thing was solved and how to actually how people actually solved this problem of finding out the value of root of minus 4 now square root of minus 4 was said to have right square root of minus 4 was actually split into square root of minus 1 into 4 square root of minus 1 into 4 so this can be actually split it into root of minus 1 into root of 4 root of minus 1 into root of 4 this is actually done using a rule called as square root of ab is equal to square root of a into square root of b when a comma b are positive numbers a or b are either one of them are positive numbers yes that's it Uh, either both or one of them should be positive numbers that is how i am supposed to write it it is like that right a comma b one of them or both either one of them or both should be positive when both are negative it is not possible should be positive that means that i am having i can write it as square root of ab can be written as square root of a into square root of b if either a or b is positive 
All right, either one of them need to be positive. If both are positive, that is also acceptable. But if both are negative, then it is not acceptable. So this is the fundamental rule that was used in order to write this equation into this form. You can see that in when I write root of minus 1 into 4, you can see that my this is a negative number, this is a positive number. So I can write it as root of minus 1 into root of 4. And I can say that the answer is equal to plus or minus 2 into square root of minus 1. I can write it as square root of minus 1. One. Why? Because square root of 4 is equal to plus or minus 2. Square root of 4 is equal to plus or minus 2. So I can write it as plus or minus 2 into square root of minus 1. Now the square root of minus 1 got replaced. Now square root of minus 1 got replaced by a number called as i. Square root of minus 1 got replaced by a term called as i. And this i is called as my imaginary number. So when I write this, this becomes plus or minus 2 into i. Plus or minus 2 into i becomes plus or minus 2 into root of minus 1 becomes plus or minus 2 into i. And it is called as plus or minus 2 i. Right? So my answer to this particular question, square root of minus 4 was square plus or minus 2 into i. Right? And this number came to be known as imaginary number. This number came to be known as imaginary number. So everyone please write down this along with me. Now <clears throat> let us see some more examples for this particular scenario. Let us write some more examples for this particular scenario. The scenario goes something like this. If it is called as square root of minus 36. Square root of minus 36 was written as square root of minus 1 into 36. This will be split into square root of minus 1 into square root of 36. Square root of minus 1 into square root of 36. What is square root of minus 1? I can write it as i into square root of 36 is plus or minus 6. So I will write this answer as plus or minus 6i. And what does this i stand for? i stands for square root of minus 1. All right. So this is the, this is called as the imaginary part of a, or this is called as an imaginary number. So when does an imaginary com number come into existence? When you have to find the square root of a negative number, then we say that an imaginary number comes into existence. Fine. Very good. Now what is a complex number? Complex number is actually a combination of real number and a imaginary number. What is complex number? Com Complex number is a combination of, you can see that it is a combination. What is complex number? Complex number is nothing but a combination of real number and an imaginary number. Real number and an imaginary number. Now, how is this combined together? They are combined by placing them side by side. When I write 3i minus 2j, when, in, when I used to write in vector form 3i minus 2j, you know that I am not actually subtracting 3i from 2j. What am I writing? I am writing it to be 3i, 3 uh, uh, units towards my x-axis and 2 units towards my negative y-axis. That is the logic, right? So, when I am actually doing such kind of things, similarly, I will write these part like a plus ib. When I write it as a plus i b a is representing the real part and b is representing the imaginary part this does not mean that i am actually adding a and i b because that cannot be done why because one is a real number and another is an imaginary number you cannot add real number to an imaginary number similarly ex exactly like this i have three apples and i have two oranges can i add this three and two together no, I cannot. Why? I cannot say 5 something, right? I cannot say something like that. Why? Because they are not identical. If it was five, 3 apples and 2 or two apples, then it will be fine. I will be able to add them and say that they have total of 5 apples, right? Similarly, that, like that, you cannot add these two. Instead, you will write them side by side, fine? So, for example, if I write an expression like this, so this is the general form. I generally write it as A plus IB. All right. So if I write 3 plus 2i, what is the real part of this thing? Real part is called as 3 and imaginary part is called as 2i. When I write it to be 3 minus 4i, what is my real part? Real part is equal to 3 and imaginary part is equal to minus 4i. When I write it to be minus 10 minus 2i, what is it called as? It is called as real part is equal to 10 and imaginary part is minus 2. Sorry, minus 10 and imaginary part is equal to minus 2i. When I write minus 7 minus 2i minus 3i then I will call minus 7 as my real part and minus 3i as my imaginary part. This is how it is generally written. I can write it as minus 4 plus 7i then minus 4 becomes my real part and 7i becomes the imaginary part. That is the logic. All right. Nothing. It doesn't mean that I am adding these two numbers together. I am just placing them side by side and it is called as a plus ib and a is called as the real part and 
B is IB is called as the imaginary part of my complex number and complex number is nothing but a combination of real part real numbers and imaginary numbers all right so I hope this logic is clear now let us actually first go once you have understood the basic idea of complex numbers now let us go and try to understand the basic uh, and a very important form of expression which is called as cube roots of unity so everyone please write the heading along with me it is called as cube root of unity cube roots of unity so please write this along with me oh, it is not units it is unity cube roots of unity yes so let us try to understand the basics of cube roots of unity all right fine very good now what is this cube roots of unity the question came as when i write x cube minus 1 is equal to 0 when i write x cube minus 1 is equal to 0 i say that x cube is equal to if i'm asking you to solve it you will write it like this x cube is equal to 1 and then you will write x is equal to 1 that is the answer to my solution all right so this is where you end your answer but the concept is a little bit different why because there is a rule in algebra that says that when you have an x raised to n as the highest degree of the polynomial then how many solutions does that equation have this equation is supposed to have n solutions this is a basic rule of algebra this is a basic rule of algebra what is that rule state this rule states that when i have an equation or when i have a polynomial when I have a polynomial to the power uh, to, uh, which is having its highest degree as n, that means that it is x raised to n, then how many solutions then it is supposed to have? It is supposed to have n solutions. This is a very, very much proved valid theory. So according to this theory, it says that my x is equal to 1 is one solution that is okay, that is acceptable. The question is, where are the remaining solutions? The question is, where are the remaining solutions? That was the question that was asked. Where are the remaining solutions? Remaining what? Remaining two solutions. So that was something that we were not actually able to find out. So we actually, that was actually a contradiction that was happened. All right. So in a way, this is the reason for the, actually the introduction of a concept called as uh, complex numbers itself. This is the reason for the introduction of something called as complex numbers. Why? I'll just show you why. Because when I actually try to expand this one, it goes something like this. Your expansion of this one goes as x cube minus 1 is equal to 0. That's true. Now, if I expand, it becomes x minus 1 into x square plus x plus 1 is equal to 0. So, then I will write x minus 1 is equal to 0 and x square plus x plus 1 is equal to 0. From this, I will get my answer to be equal to 1. That is no difficulty. This is the answer that I get here also. Now, what about this one? Now, let us actually try to delve deep into that particular concept. Now, what is the equation? I shall write the equation for you once more. It is nothing but x square plus x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now, when I actually try to solve this question, you will end up, you know that how to solve this question. This is done by using something called as you are uh, basic solving of quadratic equations that is done by a formula called as x1 comma 2 is equal to minus b plus or minus root of b square minus 4ac by 2a this is a formula that we generally make use of right so when i make use of this formula and try to find out the answer what will i end up with i'll end up with the formula or i'll end up with something like this it is going to be x12 is equal to now value of b is equal to 1 so this is going to be minus 1 plus or minus root of b is 1 so it is going to be 1 square minus 4 into 1 into 1 divided by 2 into 1 so my formula is going to be minus plus or minus root of minus 3 by 2 it is going to be minus 1 plus or minus my root of minus 3 by 2 so we generally till class 10 used to say that this has no solution. When I say that my b square minus 4ac less than 0 has no solution, what do I mean by that? When I say that it has no solution, it means that it has no real solution. It means that it has no 
real solution what does that mean it has no solution in the real number but it has a solution in the imaginary number it has a solution in the imaginary number so your solution will be what it will be an imaginary number what is that you can write root of minus 3 as this is a very important point that i am writing here you can write root of minus 3 as root of minus 1 into square root of 3 so this is going to be root 3 into i you can write actually root of minus 3 is equal to square root of 3 into i a very very important logic that we are actually supposed to understand right so this is going to be written as square root of minus 3 can be written as minus 1 into square root of 3 or it can be written as square root of root, of th root 3 into i so in such scenarios i can write this is going to be minus 1 plus or minus root 3 i divided by 2 so what are my different values of x going to be one of the values of x is going to be minus 1 minus root 3 i by 2 the other value of x i will call this as x1 i will call this as x2 this will be equal to minus 1 plus root 3 i by 2 that means that i just found out two more solutions to what to the value of x when I am trying to find out or I just found out two more values to the cube root of x. What was one of the values? One of the values was equal to 1. One of the values was equal to 1. And what is the second value? Second value is equal to minus 1 plus root 3 i by 2. And the third value became a minus 1 plus root 3 i by 2. But what is the difference between the first answer that is x is equal to 1 and the second and the third answers? What is the difference between them? One of them was a real number and the remaining two were complex numbers the remaining two were complex numbers so this is something that actually introduced the concept of complex numbers this is where actually people started to think about complex numbers what when they actually had a basic rule that said that if you have an equation having its n having its exponent equal to n then it should have n solutions so when i say x cube minus 1 is equal to 0 how many values of x am i supposed to find i am supposed to find three values of x and I am ending up with only one value. So where are the remaining two values? Either this should, either I am not able to find out the remaining two values or this rule is wrong. So that was the condition. So but out of uh, the many things or many concepts that we study, we came to know that this rule is never wrong. All right. This rule is never wrong. This rule was true. All right. That was perfectly true. This rule is perfectly true. When I say that this rule is perfectly true, then I am supposed to find out the remaining solutions for this equation. So how can I find that? I We came to a conclusion that these answers are not real, but they are complex. And the reason why I am not able to find the answers is because I was under the impression that the square root of a negative number does not exist. I was not able to find out the answer because I was under the impression that square root of a negative number does not exist that is not true we generally use the concept of imaginary number to say that square root of minus 3 is equal to root 3 into i and we use this concept and we ended up with two different answers so what are the answers to my solution what is when i say x cube minus 1 is equal to 0 what are the different values of x x is equal to 1 x is equal to minus 1 plus root 3 i by 2 minus 1 minus root 3 i by 2 right these are the three different answers to my solutions all right so this is a very important concept that you're supposed to remember and it is called as cube roots of unity it is called as cube roots of unity and a very very important answer that is all right fine now you are also supposed to find out i'll be giving you one thing that for you as a homework kind of thing you're supposed to do it on your own you're supposed to find out the cube root of unity for x cube plus one is equal to zero that means that you are going to have, you use the formula of x cube minus 1 is equal to 0, where you use the formula of a cube minus b cube. Now you are supposed to use the concept of a cube plus b cube in order to solve this problem. All right. This is also a very, very simple problem. I want you to solve it on your own and you will get the values of uh, x. Or you will get three different values of x, which is exactly similar to this one. All right. Exactly similar to these values. Similar, not same. It will be similar to these values. Fine. Now, once you are actually able to clear with this particular concept, you are also have to check whether this answer is correct or not. How can I actually check whether this answer is correct or not? How can I actually check whether this answer is correct or not? I can do that by 
taking the cube of my answers. When I say that cube root of 1 is equal to 1, then what does that mean? When I say that the cube root of 1, when I say that cube root of 1, cube root of 1 is equal to 1, then how can I say that whether my answer is correct or not? I will take the cube of this one and I am supposed to get the one inside this one, right? So when I write cube root of 8 is equal to 2, what am I supposed to say? I am supposed to get 2 cube. When I take 2 cube, I am supposed to get the value of 8. Similarly, when I take the cube of this number, I am supposed to get 1. When I take the cube of this number, I am supposed to get 1. Only if that is true, then I can say that my answers are correct. That is some kind of verification, right? That is form, some form of verification that I am actually trying to do. Now, let us actually try to understand how to do this. For doing this, you need to actually have a base and you need to have a basic idea about how to do the addition, subtraction, multiplication and division of the complex numbers. That is a very important thing that you are supposed to learn. Only after learning that, that you will be able to do this one, right? The thing that you are supposed to understand the logic is that when I raise say cube root of 8 is equal to 2, I am sorry, then if you take the cube of 2, you are supposed to get the answer 8 you are supposed to get the answer 8. Similarly, if I take, if in this scenario, if I am taking 2 cube and I am supposed to get the value of 8. Similarly, if I take the cube of this number, I am supposed to get the value equal to 1. Similarly, if I take the cube of this number, I am supposed to get the value equal to 1. This is the logic that we are actually supposed to follow. Fine. In order to understand this one, we are supposed to know the basic idea regarding we are supposed to understand the basic idea regarding addition, multiplication, subtraction and division of complex numbers. So the first step thing that we are going to study now is addition of complex numbers, addition of complex numbers. So how can I actually do the addition of complex numbers? Fine. Let us actually try and understand the addition of complex numbers. Let us try to understand the addition of complex numbers. Alright, so we know that uh, the, the every complex number has two parts. What are they? It has a real part and imaginary part. Every complex number Z has two parts, A plus IB. When I write it as A plus IB, A is called as the real part, A is called as the real part and IB is called as the imaginary part. A, IB is called as the imaginary part. The basic rule for addition and subtraction, the basic rule for addition and subtraction is that the basic rule for addition and subtraction of complex numbers is that the real number can be added only to the real number. All right. The basic rule is that real number can be added. Real part can be added only with the real part. Real part can be added only with real part only with real part and imaginary part can be added only with imaginary part and imaginary part can be added and imaginary part can be added only with imaginary part. That means that you cannot add real part and imaginary part together. All right. So real plus real and imaginary plus imaginary. All right. So fine. So now let us actually try to do that, do a question. Say if I am giving you complex numbers, I am giving you two complex numbers. Is Z1 is equal to 3 plus 4i, which is one of a complex number. And I am taking the second complex number and the second complex number Z2 is equal to 2 minus 3i. When I am having two different complex numbers, let us try to add these complex numbers and get my answer. Say Z1 plus Z2, I am supposed to find out the value of Z1 plus Z2. So I am going to add Z, Z1 and Z2, it is going to be 3 plus 4i plus 2 minus 3i. I am going to add 3 plus 4i and 2 minus 3i. So what is going to be the answer for this one? What is going to be the answer for this one? 3 plus 4i plus 2 minus 3i. This high value, we said that, as I said earlier, you are supposed to add the real part and the real part together. You are supposed to add the real part plus real part. So 3 plus 2 is going to be equal to 5. What about your imaginary part? The imaginary part can be added together. Imaginary part is 4i. This is a minus 3i. So you can add these two and you will get plus 4 minus 3 is equal to plus 1. So your answer is going to be plus i. So your final answer is going to be 5 plus i. 
this is going to be the way of addition of complex numbers similar is the scenario for subtraction of complex numbers also let us try to find out the subtraction of complex numbers i am not taking any new complex number instead i'll take these two complex numbers itself let me actually take these two complex numbers and try to do the subtraction of complex numbers say z1 minus z2 i'm going to find out the value of z1 minus z2 you have z1 to be equal to 3 plus 4i you have your z2 to be equal to 2 minus 3i so when i open the bracket it is going to become 3 plus 4i minus 2 plus 3i and you can see that you can consider the 2 3 and minus 2 together so 3 minus 2 is going to be 1 and 4 plus 3 is going to be 7 so your answer is going to be 1 plus 7i so you can see that z1 plus z2 is equal to 5 plus i and z1 minus z2 is equal to 1 plus 7i i hope that logic is also very much clear to you this is how you do the basic addition and subtraction of complex numbers i think i'll do some problems for you I'll just write some questions for you. All right. So I'll just write briefly write some problems for you and uh, we shall try to solve the questions. So I'll write question number one, which is to add two numbers, say three plus four I and seven minus two I. I'll write some more numbers, four plus ten I and four plus ten I and eleven minus I. I'm going to get another number which is going to be 10 minus 8i and minus 7 minus 4i. All right, so I am having three different numbers which I'm calling it as z1. I'll be calling first one as z1 and second one as z2. I'm going to find out both z1 plus z2 and z1 minus z2. All right, I'm going to find out z1 plus z2 and z1 minus z2. So z1 plus z2, let me find out z1 plus z2 z1 plus z2 is equal to what is z1 plus z2 equal to 3 plus 4i happens to be my z1 and 7 minus 2i happens to be my z2 so what is going to be z1 plus z2 3 plus 7 is equal to 10 and 4 minus 2 is equal to 2 so it is going to be 10 plus 2i it is going to be 10 plus 2i all right so it is going to be 10 plus 2i now let me actually try to do z1 minus z2 let me try to do z1 minus z2 z1 minus z2 is going to be 3 plus 4i minus 7 minus 2i so you can see 3 minus 7 is equal to minus 4 plus 4i minus 2i is going to be 4 plus 2 is equal to 6 it is going to be 6i it is going to be 6i so my answer is going to be minus 4 plus 6i minus 4 plus 6i that was when, uh, how i did addition and subtraction for z1 plus z2 and z1 minus z2 let us look the answer look for the answer for the second question for the second question it goes something like this my z1 is equal to 4 plus 10i my z2 is equal to 11 minus i i'll take z1 plus z2 that is equal to 4 plus 11 is 15 and 10 minus 1 is 9 so your answer is 15 plus 9i my answer is 15 plus 9i what about z1 minus z2 when i say z1 minus z2 4 minus 11 is minus 7 and 10 minus of minus 1 is going to be 10 plus 1 all right 10 minus of minus 1 is going to be 10 plus 1 which is going to be plus 11i so you got the answer for z1 plus z2 and z1 minus z2 now let us do for the third question and try to do the question number three so question number three is going to be like question number three is going to be like excuse me question number three is going to be like z1 plus z2 is going to be 10 minus 7 is 3 minus 8 minus 4 is going to be minus 12y and again z1 minus z2 is going to be 10 minus of minus 7 is going to be 10 plus 7 so it is going to be 17 minus 8 minus of minus 4 is plus 4 so it is going to be minus 8 plus 4 is equal to minus 4i so it is going to be 3 minus 12i and 17 minus 4i respectively all right so i hope this concept of addition and subtraction of, uh, of uh, co uh, complex numbers are completely clear to you now let us try to understand the concept of multiplication 
multiplication of complex numbers. Now let us try to understand the concept of multiplication of complex numbers. Fine, very good. Now let us see the multiplication of complex numbers. I will just give you a brief about what is multiplication and then I will actually start and do the problems for you. So let us see the concept of multiplication of complex numbers. Multiplication of complex numbers. Let us do the concept of multiplication of complex numbers. Yes. The concept of multiplication of complex numbers. Very good. Yes, so we are looking into the concept of multiplication of complex numbers. So in this case, what can we actually do? Let us actually try to understand the concept of multiplication of concept num complex numbers. So when I am having say Z1 is equal to A plus IB and I am having the next complex number Z2 is equal to C plus ID. So how can I find out Z1 into Z2? How can I find out the value of Z1 into Z2? So this is going to be A plus IB into C plus ID. ID. It is going to be A plus IB into C plus ID. So this is going to be A into C. This is just a simple multiplication exactly as you expand a simple polynomial. This is exactly like expanding a very simple polynomial. Now n I am having something like this x plus y into x minus y. How do you find out the answer? You will multiply this x with this x. So you will get x square x into minus y then you will write y into x then you will write y into minus y that is how you generally go ahead right so even multiplication of complex numbers is exactly the same method so how can i get the answer my answer is going to be i'm sorry my mic accidentally fell down i'm just going to reconnect my mic yeah i think it is fine now right all right so when I am trying to do Z1 into Z2, when I am going to do Z1 into Z2, it is going to be A plus IB into C plus ID. It is going to be A plus IB into C plus ID. So when I write A into C, this is going to be A into C. So that my first term is going to be AC. What is going to be my second term? It is going to be A into ID. It is going to be A into ID. So you know that I A into ID is going to be AID itself, AD into I. So it is going to be AC is going to be my first term and the second term is going to be A plus ID. I'm oh, sorry, A into ID. I'm really sorry about that. It is nothing but AD into I. It is going to be AD into I. <coughs> my third term is going to be IB into C, IB into C. So it is going to be BC into I. Right, IB into C can be run as BC into I. And the last term is going to be very interesting. It is going to be IB into ID. That means it is IB into ID. So you can see that B and D are of course real numbers. So they can be combined and run as BD, multiplication of two numbers. But I into I becomes I square. And you know that I is equal to square root of minus 1. So what is going to be I square? I square is going to be equal to minus 1. So what is going to be minus BD? It is going to be minus BD. So I'll write it as minus BD. And my final answer is going to be by combining the real numbers. I'll combine these real numbers. This is nothing but the sub addition of real numbers. Something like addition of real numbers. So it is going to be AC minus BD is going to become my first. I'll write it as. AC minus BD is going to be my first term and of course AD plus BC is going to be my second term and my first term happens to be a real part and second part term happens to be the imaginary part, right? This is how you generally do the problem. Again, I'm not sure why it is falling out. Let me actually connect it even better. Yeah, I think it's mainly because of my dress. It is mainly because of my dress. So it is going to be AC minus BD plus AD plus BI. So this is going to be the answer to this question. Now let us actually try to do some multiplication. So my multiplication is going to be 3 plus 4i. I'll just do the same, use the same numbers itself. 3 plus 4i into 7 minus 2i. Let us find out the value of, now this is going to be a little bit lengthy. 3 plus 4i into 7 minus 2i. 
Let us try to find out the answer for this question. What is going to be 3 into 7? 3 into 7 is going to be 21. 3 into 7 is going to be 21. I'll just write this once more. I'll write it using a different color. That I think will be better. So this is going to be 3 plus 4i into 7 minus 2i. So what is it? 3 into 7 is going to be 21 plus. I'm going to write plus. It is going to be 3 into minus 2i. It is going to be 3 into minus 2i is going to be minus 6i. It is going to be minus 6i plus. Again, it is going to be 4 into 7 is going to be 28. So it is going to be plus 28 into i. And the last term is going to be plus 4i into minus 2i. Very important thing. Please check it out. Plus 4i into minus 2i is going to become 4 into minus 2 into i into i. So this is going to be minus 8 into i square. Minus 8 into i square is going to be minus 1. So my final answer is going to be 8. I'll say that once again. 4 into 4i four into 2i means 4 into minus 2 that is coming first. So 4 into minus 2 is going to be coming first. Then of course I have an i here. I have another i here. So this can be written like this. So 4 into minus 2 is minus 8 and i into i happens to be i square. And in the last problem, we said i square is equal to minus 1. How did I get i square is equal to minus 1? Because i is equal to square root of minus 1. So i square is equal to minus 1. So that is how you will get i square is equal to minus 1. So this becomes minus 1, 8 into minus 1. Answer is going to be 8. So I can write the answer 8 here. So my final answer is going to be 21 plus 8 minus 6i plus 28i. Now I can simplify this. 21 plus 8 is going to be 29 and minus 6 plus 28 is going to be 22. So it is going to be 29 plus 22i. This is going to be the answer to my question. All right, fine. Now let us do the next question. Let us do the next question and it is going to be something like this. The next question is going to be, I'm going to do the next question for you. 4 plus 10i, it is going to be 4 plus 10i into 11 minus i. I am going to skip some steps for you. I will di write directly some portions. So 4 into 11 is going to be 44. 4, minus, 4 into minus 1i is going to be minus 4i. 10i into 11 is going to be 110i. 10i into i is going to be minus 10, right? 10i into i is going to be 10i into i or 10i into i is going to be 10i square. It is going to be minus 10, but you have a negative sign here. So it is going to be 10i into minus i. When I write 10i into minus i, it is going to be minus 10 into i square. And this i square become equal to minus 1. So my final answer is going to be plus 10i. So it is going to be plus 10. <laughs> So it is going to be 44 plus 10 minus 4i plus 110i. So my final answer is going to be 54 minus plus 106i. My final answer is going to be 54 plus 106 into i. All right. So I hope the basic logic of add multiplication of complex numbers is clear to you. Now let us go ahead and try, try to do the division of complex numbers. Let us try to understand the concept of division of complex numbers. Division of complex numbers. Now this is a very interesting scenario. This is going to be a little bit interesting scenario. Why? Because complex numbers cannot be divided directly. <laughs> complex numbers cannot be divided by directly. Fundamentally, when I say, when I write a plus ib divided by c plus id, I am going to say that you cannot divide a complex number by another complex number directly. You cannot divide a complex number by another complex number directly. So how can you actually divide a complex number by another complex number? You convert the complex number in the denominator. Please write it down. What do you do? You convert the complex number in the denominator, I'm sorry about the spelling, it is going to be a complex number in the denominator to a real number. Alright, so you convert the complex number in the denominator to a real number. And how do you do that? 
and how do you achieve that how do you convert a complex number in the denominator to a real number that is done by please note everyone that is done by multiplying by multiplying by a conjugate multiplying by a conjugate now let us actually see how to do that if i want to convert any one of the numbers say 3 plus 4i into a real number if i want to convert 3 plus 4i into a real number i can multiply this using 3 minus 4i what is a conjugate i hope you all know what is a conjugate in a conjugate you just change the sign of a second term without having affecting the first term at all so what is the conjugate of 3 plus 4i it is going to be 3 minus 4i what is going to be the conjugate of 11 minus i it is going to be 11 plus i what is going to be the conjugate conjugate of minus 7 minus 4 minus 7 minus 4i it is going to be minus 7 plus 4i you can see that there is a change happening only in the imaginary part there is a change happening only in the sign of plus became minus minus became plus minus became plus in all the three cases here the real term was 3 here also the real term was 3 here the real term was 11 here again the real term was 11 here the real term is minus 7 the real term is minus 7 that means that when you are trying to find write the conjugate there is no change in the real term but there is a change only in the imaginary term there is no change in the real term but there is a change only in the imaginary term and this is going to be like that and you can actually try to do the multiplication when you do the multiplication it will end up like this when i actually do a plus ib into a minus ib i will end up with the answer a square plus b square you can write it as a formula when i multiply a plus ib into a minus ib i will end up with the formula a square plus b square so what is going to be 3 plus 4i into 3 minus 4i this is going to be 3 square plus 4 square when i write 11 minus i into 11 plus i this is going to be 11 square plus 1 square a plus ib into a minus ib so if i want to write minus 7i minus 4i into minus 7i plus 4i this is going to be minus 7 the whole square plus minus 4 the whole square it is going to be minus 7 the whole square plus minus 4 the whole square this is how you basically do the problem this is how you basically try to do the concept of complex numbers right multiplication of by a conjugate let us actually try to do that by a problem let us try to divide two numbers now let us see how to divide two numbers let us actually try to do that i'll write a question for you here and the question goes something like this and the question goes something like this i am having a division like this 3 minus 2i divided by 1 minus i assume that a question is like this 3 minus 2i divided by 1 minus i this is the division that i'm supposed to do i am asked you asked you i am asked to find out the value of 3 minus 2i divided by 1 minus i as i said you remember when when you first see the division first thing that should come to your mind is you cannot divide a complex number by another complex number so what do you do you convert the complex number or the, the convert the complex number in the denominator to a real number now how do i do that i do that by multiplying by its conjugate i also i also explain to you what a conjugate is there is a change in the imaginary part there is a change of sign in the imaginary part without any change in the real part so you know what is the real part here the real part happens to be one my other complex number in the denominator happens to be one minus i the conjugate of one minus i will be equal to one plus i so i am going to multiply the denominator with one plus i when i actually divide multiply multiply one plus i here i am supposed to multiply the one plus i on the top also right in order to maintain the equation so it is going to be another 1 plus i now it is going to be that 1 minus i into 1 plus i is going to be as i said 1 square plus 1 square of course it's a standardized formula basic multiple how can i find the answer to the numerator numerator is basic multiplication numerator is nothing but a basic multiplication so how can i get the answer to that it is going to be 3 minus 3 into is going to be 3 minus 2i into 1 plus i i'll do that by my own so it is going to be 3 into 1 is 3 plus 3i minus 2i plus 2 divided by 2 why 1 square plus 1 square is 2 so it is going to be 3 plus 2 is 5 plus 3 minus 2 is going to be plus 1 so 5 plus i divided by 2 is my answer so you can see that when i'm actually trying to find out the 
when I'm actually trying to do a division of complex numbers, you cannot divide it directly. Instead, you convert the denominator into a real number and then do the division. We shall do one more question in order to understand this problem, in order to understand the basics of division of complex numbers. So it goes something like this. 7 plus i divided by 2 minus i. So how can I do that? I am supposed to actually multiply the multiply with the conjugate of the denominator. So when I am multiplying it here, I will write it on the numerator also. So it is going to be 7 plus i into 2 plus i. It is going to be 7 plus i into 2 plus i divided by 2 minus i into 2 plus i. 2 minus i into 2 plus i is going to be 2 square plus 1 square. As I said, it is a direct formula. A plus ib into a minus ib is a square plus b square. A plus ib into a minus ib is a square plus b square. So this is going to be 7 plus i. So it is going to be 2 square plus 1 square. Now 7 into 2 is 14. 7 into i is 7i. i into 2 is plus 2i. i into i is minus i square. It is sorry, it is going to be plus plus i square i into i is i square and i square is nothing but minus 1 so it is going to be a minus 1 coming here so it is going to be 4 plus 1 is 5 so my answer is going to be 13 plus 9i divided by 5 if you have a doubt in how i into i became k it is just by multiplying this i and this i so it is going to be i square and is equal to directly replaced by minus 1 that's it <laughs> nothing more complicated fine so your answer is going to be 13 plus 9i divided by so this is how you do the basics of multiplication and division of complex numbers. So in this lecture, we have seen what a complex number is. We have seen the concept of a square root of a complex number in which we mentioned about. I'll just recap the whole thing. We mentioned about the concept of root a b, which can be written as root a into root b. In which scenario, when I say that a comma b, either one of them must be either one of them must be positive. They must be positive. That was the first thing that we studied. Then we studied about the concept of cube root of 1, then we studied the concept of cube root of 1, then we also checked about, I asked you to do something of regarding x cube minus 1 is equal to 0, then we studied about the addition of complex numbers, subtraction of complex numbers, multiplication of complex numbers and division of complex numbers. Please do remember, I had asked you to do one more concept that is nothing but the, you are supposed to find out minus 1 plus root 3 i by 2 the whole cube and try to find out the value. Now how to find out that, this one? multiply this three times. It may look a little bit difficult, try to do it and you should get the answer to be equal to 1. Minus 1 minus root 3i by 2 the whole cube. Again you are supposed to get the answer to be equal to 1. If you are able to get the answer to be equal to 1, that means that you are very good with the multiplication of complex numbers. If not, try to do it again and again and again. Try to do a basic practice of the first set of NCRT problems. Okay, You can take your basic NCRT textbook and try to do the problems from that. If you are not getting the answer to be equal to 1, then slowly after some time you will end up with the answer equal to 1. Alright, so that was the question, right? Yeah, this is something that I had asked you to do, minus 1 plus root 3 i by 2, minus 1 minus root 3 i by 2, the whole cube. In both the cases, you are supposed to get the answer to be equal to 1. Again, you are supposed to do this as also a homework question before watching your next lecture, alright? So this is something that you are supposed to do before watching the next lecture. Don't go and continue this. You ended up with this lecture. You may have the second lecture with you right now. You may or may not have the second lecture with you. Even if you have the second lecture, don't go watching that. Instead, do this one, do this one, end up with the answer 1. We are not ending up with the answer 1. Take your NCRT textbook, practice the basic multiplication, division, uh, addition and subtraction of complex numbers in the NCRT textbook. Then come back to do this one, try to do it again, get the answer 1, then it's fine. Once you get completed then, go for x cube plus 1 is equal to 0. Using the concept of a cube plus b cube, the formula is nothing but a plus b into a square minus a b plus b square. Don't go about searching that now. Alright? So, there is a formula. If you do not know the formula, study the formula by heart. Alright? So, use that formula. Try to find out the equation. It will be x square minus x plus 1 equal to 0, which is different from the one that we here add here, which was x square plus x plus 1. So that was different. Now you may solve that and try to get an answer something that is similar to this one. It is going to be a little bit different but similar. Then again try to take the cube of that one. You should end up with the answer minus 1 because it is 
x cube is equal to minus 1. So when you actually multiply this, your answer that you get in the next question, not this one of course, the next one that you will get, you should get the answer to be equal to minus 1. Once you are done with all these things, please go on to the next lecture. If you have any difficulties, you may contact us through the doubt clearance portal. All right. So I hope this lecture has been clear to you and I am concluding this lecture for the time being. I will be seeing you with the next lecture of complex numbers. Do the homework before watching the next lecture. All right. So thank you for watching.